morning, everyone. Author J.K. Rowling penned the famous Harry Potter books. There was a character by the name of Lord Voldemort whose name evoked such fear and dread that he was only referred to and in hushed tones as he who shall not be named. On August 29th, 2005, we were introduced to our own version of Lord Voldemort. But it was no fictional character. It was a collective experience of an entire region, an entire country. For us, it was a collective experience of 15,000 employees of people whose job it was to rebuild the electric and the gas infrastructure. I remember the moment that I knew that this was no normal storm. The path of the storm moved from a, an eastward, northeastern direction, headed now beeline toward the mouth of the Mississippi. That next morning, the crews who were embedded in New Orleans with us at the Hyatt Hotel, we sent them out to the street in large trucks to get a firsthand view of just how, de how damaged the system was. I'm sitting on the fourth floor of the, on the, of the Hyatt Hotel in our command center, and I hear the following coming across the radio. He said, Mr. West, there are white caps running water gushing down Canal Street. I knew at that moment, and we knew, that we had to get everybody who was still stationed in New Orleans out right now. This is a shot from the, the power plant, the Michoud power plant in New Orleans East, and it's the only power plant that's functioning that's still headquartered in New Orleans. And that pole you see to the left of the picture, it's about 60 feet tall. This is the storm coming in to make landfall. And what you don't see in the bottom of that picture is about a 12-foot fence that uh, the storm surge totally took out. This was a devastating moment we knew that we were in for a long haul. But again, the areas of the city initially that flooded, flooded. We thought, again, we had dodged a bullet. So we moved forward. All of a sudden, we moved several hundred employees who were housed in New Orleans to ride out the storm to Baton Rouge. What we did not know was that the 17th Street Canal, the London Avenue Canal, and the Orleans Canal, these were drainage canals separating the, uh, the waters of Lake Pontchartrain from the city, had given way. We didn't know it at the time. But what had turned from a storm that, that was devastating in, in its own right turned to deadly and the tune of about 24 to 48 hours. This is what was then the Hyatt Hotel. This was my home, the home of uh, ultimately the city of New Orleans. Much of the planning that took place around the rebuild of New Orleans and our response took place in this hotel. The ultimate conundrum during that first week to two weeks was holding two bottles of bottled water. And the question we had to ask ourselves is, do you drink it because you're thirsty or do you bathe with it? You can imagine what things smelled like <laughs> after a few days of no power, no sewage, nothing. It was a few days after the storm had passed when I took the first aerial tour of the city to see just how bad it was. I took off on probably that Wednesday or Thursday morning after the storm in a helicopter, and I hear Todd beginning to cry. His voice was breaking. Todd had just finished a tour of duty in Iraq. And I said, uh, you're okay. He said, um, 
Mr. West, I am not accustomed to seeing this level of damage unless we farmed a town. I never thought I would see scenes like this in the United States of America. And at 5,000 feet and slightly above, I was looking at what I thought were the foundations of homes with the ground as the backdrop. And as I lowered uh, in, in altitude, I realized I wasn't looking at the foundations of homes with the ground as the backdrop. I was looking at the roofs of houses with the water as the backdrop. I fly to Baton Rouge, and at the Jimmy Schwager Center, it was where we had the lion's share of our employees. I remember the employees gathering in. They'd come from running errands in Baton Rouge. Uh, they'd come down from their room, and the only images on television in Baton Rouge was the, the lower ninth ward where the levee had given way. There wasn't a lot of detailed information about how bad it was because, again, the city was, was literally on its back. And it was a room not unlike this where the employees were gathered and they were waiting for me to tell them. And I couldn't get into the narrative around what I saw before the, the questions came to me in rapid succession. What about New Orleans East? What about St. Bernard Parish? What about, Rod, you know where I live in, in, in Uptown in, in Lakeview. And all I could muster was six feet of water. Oh, what about my neighborhood? nine feet of water. Rod, I, I live in Chalmette, you know, right by the smokestack. I couldn't even see your house. And over the course of that 15 to 30 minutes, reality sunk in that these employees who enjoyed the culture of being housed and staged in a strategic location to come back to bring power back to the city, that the two days of clothing that they brought with them was all they had left. That they were like the tens of thousands of their fellow New Orleanians. They were homeless. Absolutely homeless. And of course, the parents, our, our employees and their spouses and family members trying to hold it together for the kids, but the reality of what I just said hit them as well. And we did the only thing that we could do at that time. We broke down and cried together. It was at that moment for me personally that, I, that the weight of the authority that that came with the position I had with these employees within the company was overwhelmed by the awesome sense of responsibility that I felt and that we as a company felt towards them because we were going to ask these same employees to come back to neighborhoods that they did not live in, to rebuild infrastructure, and to come to work every day not knowing how they and their own lives and their own families were going to pick up the pieces. For us at Entergy and for many of the people in the city, the rebuild of New Orleans began that night. This is a water inundation map that depicted in infrared terms what we all saw from our various points. Notice that the only area of the city that did not flood was what we call the sliver on the river. That is the crescent-shaped area along the Mississippi River that includes to the west, Carrollton Avenue, St. Charles Avenue from west to east, picks up the French Quarter, and what we know is the Central Business District. Interestingly enough, that's about the area of the original settlement of the city of New Orleans 300 years ago, the only area that was bone dry. What's the first step in any recipe in making a gumbo? First, you make a roux. In the gumbo that is the rebuild of New Orleans, 
we knew that we were the rue. There would be no rebuild if we did not do a successful job in restoring the critical infrastructure that supported the city. That meant electricity, that meant gas, certainly sewer and water, and the levees. We learned at six years old that electricity and water didn't mix. We began the rebuild in the areas that were dry. And I said, I remember telling General Honore, we will follow the water. That meant that we would start at the sliver on the river, work our way north, and then east. Interesting thing about that. What do you think, for those of you listening to this who are New Orleanians, what do you think is the demographic makeup of the original sliver on the river? It is presumptively, and was presumptively 10 years ago, viewed as predominantly well-to-do, if not predominantly white. That dynamic, irrespective of the laws of physics, fed a narrative that haunted me and haunted us as Entergy as we were going about the business of trying to rebuild and bring infrastructure back to the city. I was out of town talking to a group of, of New Orleans displaced citizens who, by the way, had grown tired of being called refugees when they were, in fact, fellow Americans. The, this, this woman, an elderly African-American woman, accused me of conspiring to keep poor and disenfranchised African-Americans from returning to New Orleans. And I won't go into how offensive that was to me personally. It was offensive to the men and women of Entergy who were risking life and limb literally to bring power back under this plan. But I told the woman, ma'am, I'm not the reason you can't come back home. I know where you live in the Ninth Ward off of Tupelo Street. Her entire block no longer existed. That scene played itself out over and over again as we were trying to communicate to people who couldn't repopulate the city. Remember, we were only repopulating by zip codes, and the zip codes where people were allowed to even come back was based upon, one, being able to clear the debris, and two, where they thought we could restore power. But the, the pace of restoration, as best as we could at least, followed the water. And for the ensuing probably two to three years, candidly, as we went through a process where New Orleans was defined by the FEMA trailer experience and everything that our customers endured uh, trying to get off their back, um, to get on their knees to crawl, to crawl then to walk, walk to run, when too much of the debate during those difficult times was around whether or not New Orleans should be rebuilt. Or the sensibility, the absolute nerve, the unmitigated gall that we as a city had to rebuild a city knowing that we were living below sea level. As, as though we were the only city in the country, much less the world, who had ever been built um, below sea level. I will tell you that the narrative around New Orleans was a difficult one within which our corporate entity had to respond because our corporate headquarters left New Orleans and relocated to Mississippi. And be sure that the state of Mississippi, and we tip our hat to them because they took care of us, they're also in our service territory, they wanted the corporate headquarters to stay. And they gave our board of directors a whole host of reasons why Entergy should not come back to New Orleans. But our leadership and our board asked the employees, what do you want to do? And to a man and woman, it was a resounding yes. They wanted to come to be a part of the turnaround of one of America's great cities. 
I got a bird's eye view of, of true resilience, of true determination. Those same employees were the very ones who went door to door, neighborhood to neighborhood, asking and talking to customers about, are you going to come back? If we rebuild it, will you come back? An absolute matter of, of pride for us. And in the 10 years since, there's a lot that we take a great deal of pride in seeing about our city. The other elements of that gumbo have manifested itself with the resurgence of the New Orleans economy. The Army Corps of Engineers stepped up and, and, and refortified the levees. The move that Entergy made to come back to New Orleans also sent a signal to the investment community that the, the city's only Fortune 500 company headquartered in New Orleans was coming back and was willing to risk capital. We've talked with in, investment bankers and mortgage companies, insurance companies, and they told us that that was a significant signal in their decision to begin insuring homes, rebuilds, and purchases. And what has transpired in the last decade uh, has been a matter of, of great pride for us. We were not 100% sure that the city would come back. 80% of the citizens evacuated, but we felt the obligation and had the obligation to make power available for customers who wouldn't be able to take power for months and in some instances years. My motivation in agreeing to do the TED Talk was to give an ode, a tip of the hat to the employees who answered the call. Employees, some of whom we picked off the roofs of houses days after the storm and the only thing that those employees were interested in doing was coming to work to rebuild their city. From the days after the storm to the very moment that these lights came on in this facility today, we're not simply in the business of powering an electric grid or a gas system. We are, in fact, together powering life.